to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Friday episode of the show, Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, back with you. We had a Thursday night football game, we got a lot of matchups to talk about, we got news, and the return of Fantasy Faceoff, because yeah. the, the people were the people were vocal. Mm-hmm. And they wanted it back. I don't know if it's because they wanted DFS lineups. I don't know if it's because they wanted to see us ridiculed. Probably uh, both. I think it's the more the latter. I think it's more the latter. But I will say that, you know, look, I missed it. I missed it too. And I really enjoyed putting together a lineup uh, for today's episode. So the shame begins again. Next <laughs> week we'll make our lineups today and then the shame will be bestowed because the oh, people yeah. – the people want to see us look stupid. Can't wait. And uh, normally that means for us, you know, we're very sweaty and uncomfortable. Yeah, I can't wait to see what terrible things you guys do to my face this year. Your face is getting bigger every year, and so the mask well, sizing I, is... Yeah, it's almost impossible, Mike. Yeah, well, I would say the... What's the bu what's the back of your hat? What's the amount of... How oh, many, this one? I think dots? we're on two buttons, guys. Are you on two? <laughs> oh, this one's a three-burger. Have you ever gone... Would you go full open? I... Oh... Yeah, you might have to soon. Like, like if your head gets large enough. I think if I can convince people that's like a fashion trend. Right. You could like do a, that. Like after dinner yeah. with your belt. You know, you just go, right. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm living free. I, w I will say. After a big meal, he likes to open his hat. I, I, I like to <laughs> unbutton my pants and take <laughs> it's off. It's more like after reading a book because then yeah. the head swells up. Ah. But Did you see? My, my son shared with me that there was a guy <laughs> who... Every day he went into the library and he rented 10 books and he'd bring them back the next day and rent 10 more. But each time through uh, makeup, he would make his bald head slightly larger. <laughs> and so every day when he would return to the library, his head, head would become slightly bigger as he would rent Wait. 10 more books this, from the library. This is so much work for and a silly it was, joke. It was all just how long would it take for the person to notice that he was bringing the books wow. back and his knowledge was rising and rising. Yeah, that's incredible. Sorry. What uh, a bit. I was, was going to say, uh, I think I will go, I'll go snaps open before I ever go one button. Really? Okay. Yeah. I'll just. Uh, the, the one button, the, uh, the the structural integrity, man. That thing, like, the, 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 the. the Whatever the snaps, I don't know. The, the, yeah. they're just they're wiggling all over the place because it's go, just the yeah. one button. So, in other words, you are one step from from open right now. Well, no, he's on, no, no, he's I'm on, on three. three. Oh, this. you're on three. A lot of hats are two. I was buttons. gonna say we, I got pictures of a hat that's on two from I've, you. I have purchased many a hat where I put it on two, and I'm like, never wearing this hat again. <laughs> just too much fantasy football knowledge up in that noggin, Mike. Yeah, and, I, and, um, uh, I, I, I like when I get a haircut that can help it a little bit. <laughs> but but not very much. <laughs> All right, the community. Head over to jointhefoot.com, get access to the new ultimate dashboard and a ton of extra advanced stats and tools, the stream finder, a lot of resources for you. Uh this year, jointhefoot.com, check that out. We had a Thursday night football game. Yeah, we did. And uh Let's well, start let, let's start with the good stuff. Let's start with the good stuff. I for me, you can't transition back. The good stuff was Devon A. Chan seems healthy. Uh, he played. He started. He played way too long into he, the game. Did they think he was Derrick Henry? Like, what are they doing out he there? He had 29 touches in a game where we weren't sure he was going to play, and then Jeff Wilson went out injured. So Yeah, that, which, you know, on Twitter you're reading, this is what happened. Uh, Jeff Wilson went out with, I think, uh, maybe what was it, an oblique? I can't yes. remember. Okay, so he went out. That's why HM was still playing late into the game, but it's like why why don't you put Jalen Wright out there? Like let the rookie get some touches, but he not, was also coming oh no, he wasn't coming off of an injury, right? No, he was a healthy yeah. scratch in week one. I mean, 
Not my decision to make. I that was it was great for it, fantasy. It points. felt highly questionable. It, it but was, yeah. is unbelievable at the end of this game in PPR. A chan outscored James Cook, who was in his own right unbelievably he was awesome. awesome. If uh, I can't even imagine how many fantasy how many fantasy points he would have scored if you know the game had stayed competitive because it was like felt like it was the you know the game just started and three touchdowns for for Cook. So good for yeah. Those I two. mean. It, James Cook was the story. HM played a ton. I, nothing I said about the game was right. I was wrong about everything. Yeah, it was. Tua was a terrible start. We we gave you the numbers that he's put up against Buffalo. He threw three interceptions, two of them inexplicably to oh, players. Yeah. To players that had not been on this roster or played or had snaps with Tua that he threw anticipatory throws to that didn't know the play. I mean, Robbie Chosen was one of them. He didn't go down the sideline. He he cut the route off. Tua threw it up the sideline. The other one was to Du Bois. Du, du, yeah, the boys. Du Bois. Uh, it, I mean, they had him. I don't know what to make of the game overall in terms of like Buffalo. Buffalo looks great. Maybe I, I, Arizona's better than we thought if they maybe. they almost beat Buffalo in Buffalo. But the defense was incredible. They only threw the ball nineteen times. Yeah, it would. Tua being so bad when he was healthy during the game led to Josh Allen having a very subpar fantasy out outlook. I mean the which is their recipe. Just yeah. for, to be clear, this is what they love to do. This game script, run the football, and play defense. I think is the way that Buffalo wants to win the ball games this year. So. It was great to see Kincaid get forced into the action. I mean, it was very early that they. Uh, it was like two immediate targets to mm -hmm. him, and then he got unfortunately. Kicked in the head, you know, like just an inadvertent kick to the head as he was getting up, so he missed some time. And then, you know, Keon Coleman with the goose, which is, I think, far more a product of just what happened with the game. I, I don't think he would have been shut out had the the, the, the script gone a different way. But it was... I that, mean, the pass attempts. Yep. It, total attempts and the need to throw the football. If, if you're not playing, like if Buffalo is in a plus situation moving forward where they're heavily favored, you're not going to be able to count on wide receivers from Buffalo. That's just going to be the truth of the matter. I mean, Shakir looks the best of the group, but five for 54. Yeah, his his, fine. his value is never going to be great for fantasy. Even if Shakir ends the season as the number one target in this offense, he's going to be pretty much irrelevant. Uh, he's not so, a deep threat and, and, a, and a touchdown machine, so I would still lean towards Coleman. But this is what we saw at the end of last year. They want to run the ball nonstop. Uh, what was exciting and I think hopefully prescriptive was the fact that when they got down like on the two yard line, it was James Cook. Yeah, that they was very, they, that was very they didn't exciting. Bring in Ray Davis. They let James Cook have it. And lo and behold, your good running back can still do it in short yardage. I think he could have run that one in backwards the way they opened up a line for him. HM was great. Everyone else was a disaster on Miami. Tyreek Hill, terrible. Jalen Waddle, terrible. Waddle was about an inch from a yeah. really good game if the yeah. if he crossed the plane on the. But now now looking forward, you know, to uh, the in, the headline that we we yes. buried here is that Tua. Well, we were just were, we were putting it off. Tua was concussed brutally in this game, and the future of Tua Tungavailoa on this on this team. I mean, I I honestly I think he's probably going to play football again. I think it'll be six weeks or something. You know, it'll be it'll be a long period of time. I'll be shocked if he walks away. Not that he shouldn't. I think I, I think you're talking about the person versus the player, and the person's more important, and we all don't want to see something tragic happen on the field or in his future. Yeah, even the, the head coach told him he's the quarterback of his family, and so that's right. what he's got to think about first. Um, I don't think anyone out there would blame him from, for walking away from football. Um, you know, the he will almost certainly be – medically cleared to return to football um and if that's the case then he will have the decision to make i'm guessing like andy if i had to it's going to make my bet i'm guessing he's missing two to four weeks and is back so it, you know and for this team skylar thompson hadn't played since 2022 i believe ryan Tannehill's available out there there's a lot of talk about him but this is huge implications for what this offense wants to do and what tyree kill can do and what you know, Jalen Waddle can do like if you don't have the you know the main 
crux of throwing the ball deep in these timing routes, like you're going to have major issues. Like, major. You're going to see screen passes to Tyreek Hill every week 15 times, and you're going to see, you know, a lot of the running game, which, you know, maybe that's good for Achan and Mostert when he gets back. But yeah, I'm not overall, too... it was demoralizing. It really, it was. as a fan, yeah. it was yeah. demoralizing. And, you know, shame on every single person that tweeted about Tua's copability. That's not the point right now. Like, yeah. Everybody, you're on a football field running faster than any of us can run, making decisions faster than anybody can make a decision. And honestly, and trying to get a first down as well, it where it's like you, yeah. you, you really can't you know slide this, there. That's the problem. That's what makes me so angry about it is that if he slides there and doesn't get the first down, the whole world's going to come out and call him, you know, whatever. You yeah. know, you're soft. You don't know what, you know, put it out there for the team. Go hit him hard. And then if he does it, He's also stupid because he put himself out there and put the risk. I think we all agree Tua should be sliding. Like, we all, with the history, but making split-second decisions at the NFL level, it's hard to do. It's hard to do with the, the everything that happens from a momentum standpoint in the game. And frankly, none of that should matter in this story right now. Right. And it really, I don't let it irritate me very often when I see the idiots because I know that they already exist and they're doing idiot things all over the place. But it really bothered me last night. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a, this is a a man in his life. You know, this is beyond football. So it, you know, we'll have to wait and see what his decision is. In the meantime, um, Jalen Waddle takes the biggest hit because I, Ty, yeah, Tyreek Hill agree. will be the number one target. They will, you know, the, the screens will go to him first. And he is so unbelievable that you know you can have an inaccurate quarterback throw him the ball downfield and it's ten yards away and he'll just go run to that spot instead. And grab it. So I I think Tyreek is still someone I'm going to start every week with a backup quarterback. Waddle's someone I'm probably going to bench until you know I'm 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 shown otherwise or until Tua is back. And Achan I'm not worried about at all. No, I mean Achan was outstanding, and he's going to catch. He caught a million passes again, and and if this team's in negative game scripts, he's going to catch a million more. So for Mike on a my guy perspective, James yeah. Cook through two games looks like a league winner, and. Jalen Waddle is TBD because of injury. So yeah, yes. and Waddle Waddle looked good in week one. Week yeah, he, two, he looked good in this you know, game too until until the the Tua injury. I mean, he was. I want them to bring a veteran in. Oh, it was somebody be great. that knows what they're doing that can execute a downfield offense. I, if you're Mike McDaniel, you have to bring somebody in that's going to throw the ball downfield to give your yourself a shot. You don't have the defense. I don't know that that exists. Yeah, yeah, that person. Well, exists. I mean, but that, that person is the example of the, Ryan Tannehill. Ryan Tannehill could come in and run a run first offense that takes play action shots down the field, just like he did in Tennessee. That's what the offense was in Tennessee. Handoff, 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 play action, deep shot to AJ Brown, Corey Davis. That's what I would like to see in in Ryan Tannehill coming to this team. Whether it's him or not, you know, if we had Jameis Winston coming in, if we had Joe Flacco coming in, those are guys that could execute downfield. Now those are on rosters. Yeah, I'm just you, saying, like, of the players available out there. Bring somebody in that can utilize your strengths at wide receiver, in my opinion. If you yeah. want a shot to stay competitive in the division. It, it, I mean, that'll all come down to Tua's health of what, like how how large of a move does the team want to make? Because if you're going to go after Flacco, uh, which would be, I mean, that would be great. This this offense would work with, with Joe Flacco, but you have to trade for him. You have to trade for Jameis. Uh, the backup quarterback situations for a lot of these teams, it's always a a head scratching situation for me because I know you don't you don't want to over invest in a backup quarterback, like give a bunch of money to a guy that you know or that you hope never has to take a snap for you. But then these situations happen. You're like, well, you got to go get someone. You're like, <laughs> shouldn't the next player up be the person who you are? confident enough in that this this guy can carry the team for six weeks? I, I don't think there's enough humans on the planet that can allow backups. There, there's not enough starters that are really actually good. So getting a quality backup is like darn they, near impossible. They uh, they they kept Skyler. They let, you know, uh, Mike White was on this team last year. They let him go. I believe he's on Buffalo's practice squad. He was a name that was, that at least made sense because you could just go get him. There were 60. But trading is. There were 66. Different quarterbacks that started a football game last year based on what yeah. I'm seeing here from Pro Football Network, which means that, to your point, Mike, the investment, like Jason said, maybe there's not enough of them, but spending money on one is worth it. All right, let's talk about some other big news. 
news and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. We went from thinking Hollywood Brown would, would be back maybe soon to Hollywood Brown undergoing surgery to repair his SC joint, which probably means his season is over. So I don't think we're going to see Hollywood Brown anymore this year, honestly. Uh, at, the, at the very least, it's going to be months, and then it will be irrelevant. Yeah, I, I just... You know, this is this is the Hollywood Brown. Yeah. It's unfortunate for him, but this is exactly the last three years. Never get a chance. He never gets a chance to be on the field healthy and do what he does. Jordan Love didn't practice, trending to not playing. Jake Ferguson did not practice. We'll wait and see on him. Tight end for the Cowboys. CMC was limited again on Thursday. He has been trying to go, but I again, I think that this team is going to. This is just protecting. They're going to make a judgment call on Sunday about. You know what they got the third best performance of the week at the running back position out of Jordan Mason. Yeah, and they're playing against Sam Darnold, and the following week they are divisional against the Rams. Like I, I, I really expect to see CMC in Week Three, not and, two. And in part of my horrible other mistake last night of of being scared of Achan coming off of injury was the confidence that Mason would get the start by himself. We'll see if that happens. If it does, Mason should be awesome. Yes. I mean, he was the running back three last week. Addison did not practice again on Thursday. Ken Walker did not practice. Oblique injury, which is what uh, Jeff Wilson went down with last night. Well, we'll, ha we'll have to monitor today. Pay close attention. Obviously, Friday practice I, is more important. But if you're not practicing on a Thursday, not even a limited participation. It has to be full. Like, you, right. You, you, for, you, to have any confidence of playing – Ken Bone Walker on Sunday. He, it has to be a full practice today. If it's limited, then he could trend to actually play, and I'm going to be terrified to start him. And against a really tough Patriots defense. Uh, what else do we have injury update-wise, guys? Uh, T. Higgins not practicing uh, yesterday, not seen practicing today, so he is definitely trending to be out. Mike, would you just – would you just trade him off your roster so <laughs> he I, can play football? Is it, is you are the reason Am 100%. <laughs> 100% you're the problem. He's he's like holding out until he's off your roster. And I don't blame him, you know? Yeah. I wouldn't want to be on your roster either. <laughs> I want to be on mine. Trade him to me. Dalton Schultz Limited. Hey, come get him. <laughs> Roma Dunze, Keenan Allen didn't practice. Uh-oh. Malik Neighbors popped up on the injury report, which was concerning after I made him the start of the week. And then today, Brian Dable said he is good. No concern. So... I watched an interesting little interview with Kyle Rudolph. Did you guys see this? I did not. I did not. And he was just talking about Daniel Jones and just how – because he played in New York, right? He, he played against them, and he was just saying, like, this is not the guy that I played with. Like, the confidence is gone. Like, the confidence he has – like, we know Daniel Jones. Like, one of the reasons I think that in the beginning, you know, I think, Mike, you maybe were the most vocal about his potential upside in fantasy – when he was playing well and giving you those occasional games, it's because of the skills there. He can run the football. He has the physical arm talent. But Kyle Rudolph's just like, this is not the player that I played with. He's like, he's like, mm. he doesn't understand. Like, they can't protect him, right? That's been a part of it. He, yeah, he's so always been shell-shocked. So he's gun-shy, yeah. And then, you know, they went out and got him Malik Neighbors. Cool, you got him a weapon, but you took away the weapon in the backfield. Like, Saquon Barkley was part of what gets you the opportunity to – throw the football and keep a defense on its toes there. We saw what Saquon did in week one. So it was interesting to see like confidence. Daniel Jones and Bryce young have no confidence right yeah. now. And I'm not sure Watson's very far behind. Confidence plays such a huge factor. You saw Tua talk about this when he had Brian Flores as the right. coach and the change and what, what that did for his career. You saw Andrew Luck talk about like how, how important com confidence is everything for the quarterback position. And if you have one leaky, part of you that's not confident then you need to walk away which is why he walked away from football it was a it was it was about that and so it's like yeah it, it's unspoken you can't really uh, you know analyze it yeah, or quantify judge it, it. Yeah, yeah quantify it that's the word I'm really looking for but you you certainly see it with Watson and Daniel Jones those two look like and Bryce Young yeah 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 his is I think more than just confidence. oh I, th I think um I don't I, know I don't think he has special physical traits Oh, I think he did. I mean, went number one overall. I think he goes to another team. He's probably fine. That team is broken. Carolina is what they do to their players. The amount of times we've had optimism about players is Sam Darnold playing pretty good right now. 
Carolina Panther, he was awful. Baker Mayfield's a, a star in Tampa. Carolina, he was awful. You know, Frank Wright got half a season. They are broken fundamentally there. Sure. I don't think Bryce Young has a chance to succeed in Carolina. So, but you you obviously view him as is deficient more than that. I think he's a I think he's a Tim Couch at this point. The guy, you know, you just get drafted to a team that has wrong place. Wrong, wrong time. place. I mean, we talk about quarterbacks we'd like going through offensive coordinator and offense changes. How about a rookie with no you know, you get rid of Christian McCaffrey. You have no weapons. You've got no line, and you've got no coaching. I, I just don't know how well you can do. And then once your confidence is shot, you're shot. So that was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Put Clan Friday. We have a winner of a $100 gift card to FantasyChamps.com and a Fantasy Footballers t-shirt. That winner is Richard the Werewolf. Wait, wait, wait. We're literally giving this to a werewolf? That feels inappropriate. I don't know. A werewolf have... is mostly normal until the full moon. Yeah, but if he's so, wear, if if they're wearing the shirt. While that happens? Yeah. That, don't do you that. You don't get an extra. There's no insurance for being a werewolf. Nope. So congratulations. Richard the Werewolf is the username over at jointhefoot.com. Oh, also on this. Very scary. Oh, Friday the Thirteenth, boys! How ironic! Is that we're Friday the Thirteenth? <gasps> we are. It is, it's Friday, Friday the and 13th. it is the Thirteenth. Does that bode well for all of our server projects over here? Oh hey. man! Ooh. Ooh. All right, we'll take a break. We're coming back with the forecast. All right, um, we'll jump in. It's time for Fantasy Forecast, presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. There is more football. There's more football than last night. There's uh, There's more opportunities to come back if you were on the other side of the James Cook explosion. I mean, I I faced him in our league of record. Mm -hmm. I feel lucky. Oh, you should. You (laughs) should, and it wasn't worse. Because it was 29 points. It was 29 points in the blink of an eye. And it was compounded by the fact that I had Dalton Kincaid who got kicked in the head and then James Cook scores the next play. Yeah, And so I got very little from Kincaid, a lot against me. But 29 at halftime and ending with 31, I am very content. I had counted 40 at that point in time. I'm like, I've got 40 against me on Thursday night. I have no shot. I don't have a great shot, but I have a shot when he scores 31. You, you always have a shot. Do not give up. Last last week to start the week, Andy, I believe you played against Lamar and someone else that just b- both went nuclear, and you felt like your week was over You know, a- after the first game. Your week is never over after the first game. Keep fighting. And, uh, yeah, you just need a, a big performance to counter-effect James Cook. We covered six matchups yesterday. The Saints, Cowboys, Buccaneers, Lions, Colts, Packers, Jets, Titans, 49ers, Vikings, Seahawks, and Patriots. Um, nine matchups and the fantasy fo- face-off today. Let's start with um, the New York Giants and Daniel Jones at 0-1, traveling to Washington to take on the Commanders in D.C. DraftKings Sportsbook line, Washington minus two, over under a 43. What do you make of the fact that the Washington Commanders – are barely favored at home here. Is this a, is this just a product of like the, that defense? Yeah, I, is I, as bad as it I, gets. I really do think that defense is as bad as it gets. Um, all the confidence or lack of confidence talking Daniel Jones. It's going to be easier against the Washington Commanders. They're still, you know, it, we we talked about it, st- you know, starting this week, any given Sunday. Any team can be any team in the NFL, no matter how outrageous it seems. And the defense is really, really bad for the. They just don't have the talent. Um, you know, they they did that on purpose last year. They got rid of their good, you know, defensive line so that they could end the season poorly and draft Jaden Daniels. So that the the you know it's working, but it's <laughs> it's, it's work, working. It's working, but it's it's a process that's going to take years to fix this defense. So. Um, you know, Malik Neighbors, even Daniel Jones and Superflex. I'm I'm all about those guys in this matchup. Jaden Daniels has a rushing line 
right now set at 51 and a half yards, which is That's, wild. That, that seems right. That is the equivalent of 128 Point seven five passing yards for fantasy football. That's why you start players like Jaden Daniels. He scrambled on twenty five percent of dropbacks. He should got it, look. It's you love the scrambles, but you love the read option at the goal line even more. Two of those, right? Yeah. So Jaden Daniels, was, it was, there was no option. No, no, hey, no defense. Jaden Daniels, there's no option. There's no read. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's, <laughs> there's no read. There's no read. It's, it's, the, the, the read is fooled you again. So my he's my, gonna run it. Yeah. I told you guys yesterday, my son made the, the rookie mistake drafting oh, by himself. Yeah. Of drafting Brian Robinson. Dra drafting B. Robinson. B. Robinson at four overall in a draft with his friends over the weekend. Brian Robinson outscored Bijan in week one. Brian Robinson uh, in this game is very interesting to me. I think that. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, with them favored and the involvement that he had. Uh, I do think he's going to be a solid RB2 in this game. Jaden yes. Daniels, you can start. Would you start Daniels over Stafford against Arizona? I would, yes. Yes, I would. What about Baker against Detroit or Goff against Baker or Tampa? I'd, I'd still stick with Daniels. I, I've got Daniels ahead of all of them. So, Terry McLaurin, four targets, two for 17. You could definitely chalk up week one as, you know, uh, Coach Quinn came out, said he doesn't want Daniels to run as much, wants him to throw the football. No, you, you, you shut your mouth. You shut your mouth, Coach. I do believe that the if he throws touchdowns to McLaurin, it will also count for him. It well, will. Sure, but just don't tell him to. He said he wants him to, to have his reads, and then if it's not there, throw the ball away and go to the next down. What? No, scramble and pick up a first. What are you talking about, Coach? Yeah, that's a little wild. So is McLaurin on your bench this week? McLaurin is no McLaurin or I guess you, uh, this is too easy. Jameson Williams. You're going to go Williams. I would. Yes. Yeah. Find me a lower Christian Kirk or uh, Terry McLaurin. That's where I'm, I would go. McLaurin. I'm, I'm okay. Going Terry there. His of the week ones where we remind people try not to freak out Terry McLaurin and his usage and it looking like the same Cliff Kingsbury offense that we saw in Arizona that can be very destructive at times for fantasy football because it's uncreative and and players just go to one side and it, it uh, he's a he's a player who he should have a good game. Yeah, he, he should have a good game against the Giants. If there is a poor game from Terry this week, I'm going to be really freaked out. There are a lot of wide receivers out there that are started that I would start Terry McLaurin over. A list of the players that I would start Terry McLaurin over, Jaden Reed with uh with uh Malik Willis there, Deontay Johnson, um wow. Calvin Calvin Ridley this week, Lad McConkey, who what? I love. I would I would start Terry McLaurin in a really plus matchup here against the Giants over those guys. I'm not gonna overreact to one poor week. I think Jaden Daniels can get him the ball. I think right. Terry McLaurin is a good wide receiver. So I'm not you know, like like you said, Mike, if it if it goes poorly this week, okay. Maybe the you know the the red flag is starting to go a little higher, but um no, I, I think it's okay right now. Devin Singletary last week was, uh, you know, they, they had a tough week on offense. What do you think this week for Singletary? Would you play him or Brian Robinson? Brian Robinson, I but I, Robinson. I do think Singletary is he's, a fine Yeah, he's a fine play. Fine, fine play. volume play. Uh, Wandale got a bunch of targets last week. Are we um, are I'm, just going to ignore that? I'm not, personally. I I'm am, willing to ignore it because we've been here before, I, but I'm I, I get it. I'm going to because so many came in garbage time, like when the defense was just letting all the little dink and dunks go, and I don't expect this game to get out of hand. It, I'm not going to ignore it season long, but I don't want them in this matchup. All right, the Chargers are 1-0 taking on the 0-1 Carolina Panthers. The DraftKings Sportsbook line is Los Angeles. The Chargers minus five on the road against the Whew. Panthers. The over-under is just 39. Whew. Points it gives the Panthers seventeen, the Chargers twenty two. You know, uh, De you sure about that Deontay play? No, he said to sit be Deontay. Oh, but oh for Terry, yeah, for okay. Terry, and right, I'm okay. with him on that. Deontay's debut was uh, not good, not good. I mean, there there isn't confidence on the Carolina side. You talk about like it's our job to break these matchups down. I don't think we have to look very far on the Carolina side of the ball. To break this matchup, I don't think you have to look at that side of the ball. Can we? Can I mean, we genuinely, put... I don't. I wow. wouldn't start a single player on that team. I wouldn't start Chuba. I wouldn't start uh, Xavier Leggett. I wouldn't start Deontay. I wouldn't start Thielen. I would. I mean, no. You we're talking twelve team 
leagues. Yes, so. yes, 12 team, 12 team leagues. I, the, I wouldn't start any of those guys. The highest drafted players in the Megalo Bowl that were dropped after week one in the group of the top five, Deontay was one of the top five. Because uh, having Deontay means you do potentially have to watch the Panthers play football. A, a funny anecdote. I received a trade offer in lead of rec, uh, League of Record for T. Higgins. It was, it was. Uh, well, I guess it's giving away who the, the manager is. But, I would like to hear this for the but, sake of the foot clan. But it is very funny because it was the offer was Deontay Johnson plus a pick swap for next year in my favor, of course, for T. Higgins. And I'm like, oh, dude, there's. I am not looking at all to get Deontay Johnson. Uh, rejected the offer. The offer, the exact same offer, came back with the pick swap, but no Deontay. <laughs> and I'm like, that's actually a better offer. <laughs> I don't have to drop someone. I don't to have play. to have Deontay. <laughs> so wow, that's, that's funny. That's yeah. where we're at with Deontay Johnson right now. There you go. Now Deontay's line is 46 oh, and a half receiving yards, so it still seems like he's expected to be. Deontay or Wandale in an emergency? Wandale. That's easy, Wandale, for me. Oh, man, gross. I abstain. <laughs> I refuse. It's neither. I would probably go Deontay. There. I probably would, too. Herbert, Bryce Young, face off this week. Uh, J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards are both great starts. I would put them both out there. Gus Bus is my start of the week. Beep, beep. Jason, you talked about McConkey. I love McConkey. I'm not excited about him in this matchup. In if, week one, by the way, the Panthers gave up 32.2 points to running backs, like fantasy points in week one, and just 21 to the exactly. uh, quarterback position. So and Herbert if, and McConkey are kind of out for you. And the, yes, the passing game as a whole is out. If you look at what the Panthers did last year, last year you could run all over them, and you could pass all over them too. They, they, this is not a scary secondary but they were number two in fantasy points given up to the quarterback position. Like, they, 10 fantasy points a game is what they gave up to the quarterback. Elite. They were number two against wide receiver, number one against tight end. It's not because they were awesome. It's because they were unneeded. The, the passing game is unneeded against these Panthers. That happened with Houston two years ago. Yes. Houston yes, it did. had a horrible secondary and didn't give up a lot of fantasy points because – you didn't need to. Yeah, throw why, why throw when you can just run the clock yeah, out because I've got a good lead? Let's get to next week, everybody. The Cleveland Browns at 0-1 taking on the 0-1 Jacksonville Jaguars who blew a 17-3 to lead against Tua and the Dolphins in week one. The DraftKings Sportsbook line Jacksonville minus three. The over-under is 41 and a half. That's not a lot. It's not the Miami-Jacksonville game of last week that was a dud compared to the over-under. So we get to see a couple of former Clemson quarterbacks who have a ton of money wrapped up in their contracts face off against one another. I, you know, I, the situ the situation with Cleveland right now is tough because Amari Cooper was a huge letdown in week one. Now, part of that was his fault. He dropped the touchdown. A bigger part of that was Watson who looked inept who looked incapable, and who looked like he lost the confidence of his team. Oh, I don't know that he ever had the confidence of his, confidence of his team, but um, they also played against a really good uh, Cowboys secondary. I, I'm i just saying this right now. I love Amari Cooper this week. I love uh, – he's got a 59.5-yard receiving line uh, at DK. The, the uh, Jaguars so buy low right now? Buy low on Amari Cooper. Um, you've got a banged up Jerry Judy. You've got no Najoku, and Jacksonville just lost two cornerbacks. No Joku. No Joku. Dang. Nice. That sucks. Yeah. Swish. I, yeah, I was really I was on the border between swish and busted there. I could <laughs> I I was hesitant. I, I was the busted temptation because you missed it. I don't think okay. so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, um, but uh, yeah, they so so you know they they lost important cornerbacks. Um, that aren't playing this week. I think Amari Cooper eats. I really do. Now you do know that's going to have to come on the other side of the arm yes, of Watson. I so, do. I do. But so last if he year, eats, is Watson? Uh, is this the redemption game for Watson? Who, you know, Jacksonville. That defense wasn't great in week one. Yeah, I mean, it, it, Watson is always someone because of his legs that can be okay for fantasy. I don't expect Watson to have much outside of Amari Cooper. He doesn't have. Many other talented 
players. Um, you know, Jerry Judy's going to be out there, uh, but I know he's banged up. And so I, he in a two quarterback league, I think it's okay to put in Watson as your quarterback too. Uh, but Amari Cooper should get the, you know, the lion's share of the passing work here. And Jerome Ford is, he's a RB two. Yeah. Jerome Ford is a weekly play. Yes, he is. and he will never feel exciting. Yep, that's fine too. Jerome Ford or uh, Brian Robinson. Oh, okay. On the other side, Brian Robinson. Junior. Oh, Brian Robinson, the running back, not Brian Thomas, who I was thinking of. Correct. Robinson. Okay. But it, I like It's funny Brian because Jerome Robinson. Ford is always going to not get the answer whenever we're like, this guy or that guy. <laughs> but he's probably the right answer. Jerome Ford was really, really involved. Wasn't his touchdown like a oh, it's garbage. super garbage time one? Yeah, but, but – He's seventy five percent of the snaps, all the, all the the touches inside the red zone. Like the yeah, they'll while, be his. They'll while, be his. Yeah, while Jerome Ford himself is not the most exciting player, the high value touches, like catching the ball and inside the red zone, that's where we want the work. So he's gonna get it all. I've decided that one of my least favorite things that happens in fantasy football is the end zone pass interference that leads to my opponent's running back getting a free touchdown. Oh, yeah. Oh, you don't like that, huh? No. that's. I, what if I'm, you're on the other side, though? Love it. Oh, it's <laughs> okay. one of my, fa right. one of my right. favorite things in fantasy <laughs> is when the wide receiver gets <laughs> pass interference in the end zone and I know I've got the running back. That is so much fun. Yeah. Yeah. All right. On the other side, ETN still had 70% of the snaps. Uh, the matchup, it's not – an easy one and if there's some distribution of work you're going to be kind of touchdown or bust potentially with these two running backs i'm st I'm still playing travis Etienne. i am stashing tank bigsby i'm not to the point where i feel confident putting tank in there for will the timeshare of even carries will that happen again i i want to see it a couple times before i start investing in actually playing it i agree brian thomas not Brian Robinson. Brian Thomas. Yeah, you, um, you play him. The DK line is just 38 and a half. It's tough. The, the, the Browns defense is really, really good. Um, I'm, I am so excited and all in on Brian Thomas this season. Um, he's not going to be someone that just dominates every single week. So when I look at this matchup, I would rather have him on my bench than uh, out there as a starter. But his he's got talent. I mean, he, he beat Jalen Ramsey last week for a touchdown. So... Maybe he's just that good. Are are you making sure he's in your lineup, or are you just using him as like, well, if I've got a safer option, I'll go that route? He's in the exact boat that Jamison Williams is in this week where you've drafted them or picked them up much later, and so it's you're having to make calls like Olave versus these guys. Did, or Did we say Brian Thomas versus Terry? Yeah, I mean, that one I'd go Brian Thomas, yeah. Jay, where are you at with that? Oh, man, that is that is a – very tough. Um, I, I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna go Brian Thomas. What about Ridley? Calvin Ridley or Brian Thomas Jr. is one of the biggest searches because Ridley was higher drafted. Thomas later. Thomas had the better week one. I like Tennessee at home this week, yeah. so I'm gonna lean Ridley. I'm gonna lean Ridley too. Not by full confidence though. One catch for Evan Ingram last week. We just say, yeah, don't worry you, about it. You don't worry about that. Forget about it. The Raiders at 0-1-1 take on the 0-1-1 Baltimore Ravens. DraftKings Sportsbook line, Baltimore minus 8. Whew. over under is 41, which is low. Oh, so man. that means that the Raiders are projected for fewer points than the Carolina Panthers this week. Just so you know. Wait, what? Yeah, 16.8 no. versus 17 implied point totals. If if I could make a bet on which one of those two teams scores more, I – Oh, my gosh. I heard you say Ravens. And I was like, What? But you said Raiders. You bet I did. Ah. The Baltimore Raiders. I tuned out about halfway through the word. Yeah, no, that'll, <laughs> get, that'll get you with the Ray part <laughs> being the commonality. Yeah. Ravens at 25 implied point total. Um, they are eight-point favorites. That is a lot. Over the last five years when they're eight-plus point favorites, they have won 86% of those games. They have covered the spread only 49% of the time. So... We were disturbed by the Mark Andrews usage. Mike has stuck his nose at into your at your disbelief. Huh? 
Where Let's am I start putting this my nose? Over. Mike has jammed <laughs> his nose. You stop talking about my nose, yeah. good sir. Where are you putting that? I thing? bite my thumb at you. What is the expression where you like you thumb your you nose? You thumb your nose, yes. What does that mean? Like like yeah. you push your thumb. I think it's I think oh, it's Oh, you're like this. I think it's like an old timey That's good audio. It's a, it's an old timey obscene gesture, I think. So you thought you th you're thumbing your nose at the doubters. That's what I was trying to get at. Yeah, but, but okay. thumbing kind of, your well, nose is this. It is. Wait, yeah. no, no, that's like from Peter Pan. No, this makes sense. Like, when you put the when you put the thumb up in the in the five fingers, no, this and is, you go. Pfft. This is thumbing your nose. Is it? Yeah. No, I'm. I was and and more, for the listeners, I was I'm, more with Andy. I'm putting like the like the 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 whole like the high five, and you touch your nose with your thumb, and you're like, blah, 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 you know, like the turkey. <laughs> That's thumbing your nose? I believe I, so. I, I, I we got to get I don't know about We got to get our top men on this. The All point right, is I'll get on it. Mike <laughs> jammed his nose up in y'all. <laughs> yeah. Mike made Mark Andrews the start of the week. I have been on record believing that Mark Andrews is going to rebound. I hope it's this game as well. Brock Bowers had a great debut. Isaiah likely was the fab darling. You have three tight ends in this game that could get played this week and probably will be played this week. Yeah, I, uh, Brock Bowers um, looked very, very good. I have no problem putting Brock Bowers right into my starting lineup. Um, you have made the quickest about face on Brock Bowers after one week. It's because... Of any player I think you've ever... Yeah, it's because it was week one utilization. It was right off the bat. And I, I never doubted his talent. Like I, I, I've never once sat here and said, I don't think Brock Bowers is good. It's I don't think he's going to get the ball. I don't think he's going to be on the field as much as you want, and he's got a bad quarterback, all that. But, I mean. Should I read the definition of thumbing no, one's nose? We, we, no, we, we got to get more information on this one. I don't know. I think Jason was right. Oh, man. It's reading the you definition. Put the, you put the thumb on your nose, and you wiggle the remaining fingers. Yeah. All right. And it's used by school children, and there's another nickname for it. <laughs> okay. Derrick Henry. Has to do with a snook. Um, Derek, oh, okay. I see that phrase. <laughs> what is it, Al? It is cocking a snook. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, there you go. What? Okay. What, what were we doing back then? We're reading Wikipedia. That's I what think, we're doing. I think we should bring that back. <laughs> Thumbing your nose is not nearly as powerful. <laughs> but I'm afraid to say it. <laughs> I did not think for a moment that asking Al to say it would work. <laughs> Derrick Henry, Mike, you took. Uh, I took. I took his alt line of seventy plus be because of it. Just this is a this is a uh, a wager with history of when Derrick Henry is at home and they win, which the Baltimore Ravens are going to win. And will he be? Will he be salting the game away? And I I think he will. Yeah, sure. But thirty carries, like Harbaugh said, that's not in the the game plan for Henry. But the game plan for the Baltimore Ravens when they are up is to run the ball out, and that's what Derrick Henry is in there for. What's uh what's a Flowers role in your fantasy roster, dude? To be infuriating, he's a PPR flex. Uh, that that's what I think. If if you are in full PPR, he should be fine. He's a very uh, highly targeted player, but they are usually short to the line of scrimmage now. It's not entirely fair to look at his box score from week one and say that everything was short. He had a he had at least one deep pass down the field that he was he sh he would have had, but you know he could have dropped it. But it was a hardcore pass interference that drew the flag and moved them down the field. So, you know you you hope they they open it up a little bit. But I think he is a talented player, a jitterbug that looks good. And if I'm in a PPR, even a half PPR, I think he's a good flex option. Bowers' participation with a 25% target share led to Devontae Adams having his first uh, under 20% game in a while. He's only done that six times in the last 92, per 92 games. So 19% target share was where he was out last week. Do you expect him to get more involved this yeah, week? Yeah, I would expect the wheel to uh, run over. Not even be squeaky. This is just full run over Gardner Minshew in the locker room. Especially and, and when say, he throw me the ball. He wanted Aiden O'Connell. Like he liked Aiden O'Connell and wanted him for the reason of his target share with Aiden O'Connell was ridiculous. Yeah, Minshew is more conservative. I, I will say that if Minshew moves to O'Connell, that will scare me a bit for Brock Bowers on the flip. With a sixteen point eight um, implied point total for this team, I'm I don't have a lot of confidence in any of the the offensive pieces, including the running back. See, so, yeah, what are you doing with the RBs here? Nothing. Of, I'm not playing any of the. Okay, ones. trying to trying to just 
if you picked up Madison, you're just going to watch and see what happens? Madison, to me, is uh, is probably someone you don't have to start. I picked him up in a couple of leagues, and I think he'll be the better back in this backfield because of PPR. I think he'll probably have four-plus receptions in this game. But against a good Baltimore Ravens defense, I'm not sure that those four targets are going to you know, score a lot of fantasy points. Yeah, I think we, I think that touchdown could be distorting our view of his future on this roster too, because four, you know, four for 43, whatever. Um, I don't know how often he's getting into the end zone. It's more of a, what do you believe about the, the time, the, the true belief of the timeshare between him and Zemir. I believe they want Zamir to run the ball more and I they agree. want Madison to do less. But yeah. That game script may prohibit that at times, but Madison's not very good. He's not a very good player. I, I think you said it all fantastically. Also, I don't think Zamir White is a very good player. Maybe. Maybe true. Um, all right. We're going to take a break, come back with the last five matchups. The Rams take on the Cardinals. Both teams sitting at 0-1. Both had tough week one matchups. The DraftKings Sportsbook line. Arizona minus one at home. The over-under is 48. Kyler Murray is fine, by the way. People were a little worried that he popped up on an injury report. He's okay. He's going to be okay. We have a divisional matchup here. Mike made Stafford his start of the week. I am, for whatever reason, probably wrong based on last night's projection, but I just have more hesitancy around Stafford going on the road without Puka than I think you two do. The Well, I, I there's two parts to this. My hesitancy is the offensive line. The offensive line for the Rams just got decimated in Detroit. They lost at least three starters, possibly four starters. I mean, it's like that 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 line is just they're they're makeshift now already in week two. So that's scary. However, my confidence comes from Sean McVay and the fact that he's able to scheme these things and he's had the Cardinals number just uh, I I feel like the Rams own the Arizona because Cardinals because they do. And so I I love I mean obviously everyone's starting Cooper Cup but Cooper Cup is my my literal wide receiver one for the week uh, I think he eats and there's no one on the Cardinals defense that can stop him Stafford was the quarterback seven in Arizona last last year yeah his it was his, one of his, it was his second best fantasy performance of the year his averages against the Cardinals are exactly in line with what you want from a streaming type of a quarterback so Kyron put him in. Yep. If you are more desperate at quarterback, go with Mike's start of the week in Stafford. We have Cooper Cup. Yes. On pace for 357 targets. <laughs> <laughs> That's a Which, funny one after week one. Yeah, it's uh, it's wild. He's going to be obviously heavily involved. Demarcus Robinson, he was already out there 92% of the time last week, so he's going to be fine. The question will be, you know, other weapons. Their offensive coordinator came out and talked about Tyler Johnson and that he's going to be the man. He, they said he is the man that's going to need to step up. Which, that if you had picked – look, I I still prefer Demarcus Robinson, I believe, because of, uh, he's, a, he's a vet. He was already good, and he already had a role in this offense. He was – regardless of if Puka was playing, Demarcus Robinson is one of the full-time wide receivers for this team. Now, after the game, we saw – um, a quote come out of, I think, and I believe it was McVeigh who said it. He's like, we have Cooper Cup, we have DeMarcus, and then we have three other guys who are going to have to step up and fill in. That was the immediate reaction. So to see the now this coming out from the coaching staff of saying, no, Tyler's actually the guy. I mean, it, this it's a deep play, but I think that you can have some confidence in playing and, and keep your eye on Whittington a rookie wide receiver who got so much buzz this offseason I mean he was everyone around LA was like did they did they find yeah, another Puka yeah um and he's he's gonna get the opportunity I I don't have him on rosters I didn't pick him up he's on waivers I think that's too that's a, that's more of a dynasty play I, I yeah I agree but if he hits in this week that's I would go hard after him next week so Colby Parkinson's my start of the week. Yeah, he's he, you got to play him. Or he, sorry, no, this isn't forcing Colby in, but I'm saying like people are struggling at tight end, and I think he is one of the top twelve. Kyler on the other side. I have this one decision, one of our popular searches on the website, the Start Sit tool. Kyler or Jaden Daniels. I have that decision in. That's a, brutal. In a league, I'm going Kyler at home in this matchup. 
I have so much more trust in Kyler as a passer, and he's going to run the football as well. So, um, And then the big question mark in this game, the biggest storyline in this game, or for the Cardinals, is Marvin is. Harrison Jr. Yeah, we in the office. Kyler had 57 rushing yards last week, by the way. Uh, so in the office, we all have – we're very tuned into and hopeful of Marvin Harrison Jr. being the player that they drafted at number four overall. But we in, we were like, hey, let's project his line. And I think I was the highest at four for 64. So the, the optimism is not fantastic. What's his line? Uh, yeah, that's, that's, on the, that's, that's exactly where I was going to go, that the DK line's at 58 and a half. And I think I was the only one who was even slightly above it. That's because we're terrified, Mike. <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> we're, is. We're, I'm, I'm we're actually, trying to like – protect ourselves as far as lines go i'm very optimistic to 13 see this for one. 300 like I'm I, changing I, <laughs> I i i like seeing a 58 and a half uh yard line that says they expect him to be far more involved in the offense than he was week one which i think the whole world does do you want to hear something that is uh, to the optimistic side for marvin harrison yes please the cardinals did not play their starters in the preseason so you have a rookie he got one I think he got one drive in the very first game. He never got to play again. So you're talking about game speed on an NFL field. The first experience he had going out there and, and you know putting the pads on and doing it with Kyler was in Buffalo in week one where clearly we would all admit that he had hesitancy in what he was doing on the field. And so I do think that that means the acclimation period is going to be a little bit different. Okay, couple He just of names. didn't get out there. A couple of names, Marvin Harrison Jr. or Jamison Williams. I will take no further questions at, <laughs> at this time. Please respect my privacy. I, will play, I, I think you asked me that one yesterday, and I hopefully gave the same answer today. I would play Marvin. Okay. Um, and what about Tank Dell or Marvin? Oh, I, I feel like I want to be part of the Marvin game, so I guess I'll go there. Okay. I'm the other two guys, but I get it. All right, James Conner was the running back 10 last week. Yeah, he's in. And the Rams gave up 31.5 fantasy points last week to the running back position. Trey McBride yep, led in. the team in targets. It was not fun targets. They no. were just little dinks, dunks. and Yeah, tight end getting nine targets is great. He's talented. He's in. The Steelers take on the Broncos. DraftKings Sportsbook line here, Pittsburgh minus two and a half. The over under. Oh, 36 and a half. It's gross. Barf. It's, 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 <laughs> it's gross. Uh, can we get the Bonex, Mike? Bonex. Bonex. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, I mean, this is, this is not great, man. Uh, Pittsburgh's defense looked ridiculous last week. And if you take a great defense, like I, is there a better one to play this week? I don't know. Like Pittsburgh against a rookie quarterback feels, who already threw two interceptions. Between the, Jet, the Jets and the Steelers the, this week, great defensive plays. J I mean, goodness gracious, T.J. Watt was unbelievable last week against a veteran Kirk Cousins. You could not stop talking about T.J. Watt. He was just unbelievable. Now he gets Bo Nix. So from a starting fantasy standpoint, I don't know how much there is to talk about in this game. I can because tell a low you, over under, I mean, Justin Fields, I think is fine. I would start him over Stafford. I would start Stafford. Trevor Lawrence. I would probably go Fields. Uh, Lawrence against that Browns defense is is uh, tough. Fields couldn't run a lot. I talked up Pat Fryermuth. He's my start of the week. I think they're going to need him when you've got Sertan on George Pickens and the the you know last year at least the. Uh, the Denver Broncos could not guard the tight end. So I think it's kind of a, a nice amalgamation of a streaming option. I am currently being forced uh, due to my League of Record team uh, perishing in week one. I am being forced to play Javante Williams. His, ah, his week two perishing. His line is at 40 and a half rushing yards. Do I have any hope? Yeah. Yeah. <gasps> You have hope I to do? hit 40 rushing yards with no touchdowns or receptions. I he'll get some receptions. I'll tell you I, what, right now, if I get 40 yards from Javante Williams, total, that's a win. <laughs> he did catch one pass for zero yards. Yeah, where last are those? Week. Sean because, Payton, where are those? Yeah, I mean, he's just not that good. He'll he'll get I don't some. care he's, if he's not that good. The, the offense is throwing know, the ball Blake, to the running back position. Blake Watson's going to work himself into this uh, rotation now in the estimate role of four touches or something like that. <laughs> 
And then and a fumble? Like Jaleel or Javante? That is the question that we should answer. I I would still go Javante. I'm still Javante, but uh. I'm going for Jaleel. He had five catches. If I I can cheap some points with Jaleel. Yeah, I mean that's fine. I I will say this when we when we look at the uh, in, a, in a PPR you, scoring format, his receptions were worth five point one points. <laughs> that is that is a good point. Um, an argument for point for first down leagues. Uh, highest drafted players dropped after week one. You mentioned this in the Megala Bowl. There was Roma Dunes, A. Joe Burrow, Caleb Williams, Deontay, and Javante. Javante was the one on that list that I think is you should never be dropping. A, a starter? starting running back. Did, so you wouldn't drop Chuba? I don't know that he is the starter. Yeah, yeah I, he is. I would, I would hold on to Chuba, but I would certainly not play Javante, him. Javante, if, if you drop Javante, I would not have, but I totally understand it. That that was a – this is an emotional rage drop after la of seeing what happened last year, hoping for better, getting week one, saying I've had enough of this. <laughs> Cincinnati's 0-1 taking on the 1-0 Kansas City Chiefs. The DraftKings Sportsbook line is Kansas City minus six. The over-under is 48. What are your expectations in this game? Because there are a lot of fantasy-relevant players and a sure. ton uh, of question marks. I mean, Burrow is one of the top drop players. On the Bengals' side, I would I would try not to play Joe Burrow. Andy, you're not into Stafford. Would you play Stafford over Joe Burrow? I think with the history in Arizona, yes, I would. Okay. That, that's where I am as well. I think the Bengals are actually pretty easy. Of I don't want to play Burrow. Zach Moss is is a fine enough running back start. I think they will run more. It will. They I mean they completely abandoned the run last week. Jamar is in every week. Yeah, Jamar's in every week. So I mean, I just, I I think the Bengals are pretty easy this week. And like Chase Brown, if you drafted Chase Brown, don't drop him just yet. You you picked him up to see what happened, and you can't make full conclusions after one week of them divvying up the snaps. Oh, I already dropped him. Uh, just <laughs> kidding. I didn't draft him anywhere. If, if you need an emergency fine. wide receiver start, Andre Yoshivas got 100% of snaps uh, and had six targets in the game. So if we were in a place where we would formally start Tyler Boyd occasionally, you can look there with no T. Higgins at an emergency start in a deep league. I agree, but, I, man, I want to see Burrow be better before. Like, I'm – I am – pretty much benching Joe Burrow right now as well. If if I had Justin Fields and that low over under, I would still play him over Joe Burrow I would too. until like I think Joe Burrow's going to get it together. I think he's going to be By great. Week 4. Yeah, sure. Maybe it'll be week 4. And as soon as I see him look good out on the field, then I'm I'm going to scoop him up if he's on waivers. I'm going to I'll I'll try to trade for him if I if he's got a good schedule, but I'm not starting him until he looks good. Hollywood Brown's going to IR, which means Xavier Worthy. His snap count could go up. His involvement could go up. He only ran 24 routes. He's suddenly looking like a much better rest of season play than he did a week ago. Yeah, he's he like you're confident putting him out there this week against it, if this we're, team for if the big we're, play. If we're talking about like a double flex situation, Jamison Williams. I'd still I would go, I'd worthy. play Jamison Williams. I would as well. Nine targets in week one, but I I do think Xavier Worthy is a worthy start I mean when you get two touchdowns and you got Patrick Mahomes and you've got a, an explosive offense against what looked like a really bad defense um yeah you you could play him there I would say single flex Jason you're my guy Isaiah Pacheco his line sitting at 64 and a half rushing yards you feel him does I'm that feeling make you feel fantastic good? about okay. that uh, he's he's an, a phenomenal Mahomes, play Pacheco Rice yeah, are getting, locks and then worthy easy. is uh two touchdowns last week and I I beat Fine playing worthy. Looking for the Shahid Jameson Williams big play upside that defines your week. I'd play him over McLaurin personally. Yeah. It's it you gotta get more work though. I mean it's yeah, he had the two touchdowns. It's four opportunities. I mean it's one week though. Of no, course, yeah, yeah. he's going to yeah. get more work, right? I, yeah, I yes. Over the course of the season. I'm just not sure that it is in week two. And what happens if every reception in his entire career is a touchdown? Then he's the greatest fantasy player of all time. All right. See, that's in the – right now. It's in the range. Right now he's you. doing that. <laughs> Chicago's 1-0 taking on the 1-0 Houston Texans on Sunday night football. That's a fun game. Get to see Stroud and Caleb Williams in prime time. DraftKings Sportsbook line, Houston minus 6.5 at home. The over-under is 45.5. You know, we know the Chicago defense is pretty good, but – Going on the road in Houston, dealing with a trio of great wide receivers. What we saw from Joe Mixon. I mean, I was, I was watching. Um, is it Slovic, their uh, offensive coordinator? Bobby. 
Yeah, Bobby. Yeah, Bobby Slowick. Yep. They were like, he got 30 carries. What's going to happen now? Like, can he handle that? And he and he was like, he's one of the only guys in the league that is built to do this. He's like, you know, th this is what Joe Mixon does. He 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 can carry a workload uh, that large, and you're going to get games this year where this offense is dragged down on the four yard line five or six times in a game, and he's going to score three or four touchdowns. He is the only running back in the entire National Football League in fantasy football who has been an RB1 for the last three seasons. No one else has done that, and they, they haven't done it because they haven't stayed healthy. Christian McCaffrey or whatever, you've got 16 games, 14 games, 17 games played the last three seasons. So he is built for it. He's He is able to, to, to take a strong workload – He's going to be such a great. It's a lot like Saquon season. in that regard, in the fact that they plan on. I mean, the the utilization was out of control in week one. His DK line is just under seventy rushing yards. Ooh, nice. So on that side of the ball, it's pretty easy, right? I mean, Dalton Schultz is um, he's a DNP. Yeah, no, he. I like, don't expect him to play. Consolidation of targets yes. to those wide receivers. Get and, out of there, Dalton. And to Joe Mixon. I mean, Stroud, Mixon, Collins, Diggs, and Dell. Yeah. yeah. So uh, one of the things I'm most excited to watch for this weekend is this Bears defense because I think they're really, really, really good, and they looked unbelievable. They won the game in 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 week one, but they were playing Will Levis. Yeah, Will Levis makes a lot of defenses look pretty incredible. So you certainly can't say they're great yet, but if they come here and shut down or or really hamper uh, the Texans, I'm going to flip the switch and say the Bears have one of the best defenses and not overreact to whatever disappointments from Dell Diggs or Collins might happen. One of the biggest surprises maybe in week one was just Cole Komet's getting not a lot of time on the field. I mean, that was the the preseason. This yeah, was, I mean, Gerald Everett, 61%, Komet, 48%. This, this is Waldron. He just loves Gerald. He can't get enough. Yeah, with Keenan and Odunze possibly missing this game, I, I thought about Cole Komet as a starter. This is a great matchup for, for tight ends. And then I was like, ah, this – it might just be Gerald Everett. I don't know who it is, so I'm so out. Neither one. Yeah, DJ Moore is Mike's start of the week. DeAndre Swift. Consolidation if you, of targets. If you drafted DeAndre Swift. Swift should be better in this game. I mean, with If Keenan Allen and Adunze both miss, he won't sure, be. Like, I don't think he will either because I'm Houston's that, defense doesn't give up a lot to running backs. Yeah, I I think that he will see you know targets, though. Is the is Austin Eckler or DeAndre Swift? <laughs> I'd play Swift. I'm sure Eckler had a better week one. Oh, for sure. That's why I was asking. And and yeah. while I think most people will play Swift, I'll I'll bet it I'll bet Eckler has a better week too. So Caleb you, you Williams was one of the biggest drops in week one. If you're in a redraft league where you drafted Caleb Williams and you got that performance in week one with ninety three passing yards, the lowest of the week. Did you move on? Uh, like for yeah. the season, like don't you, you don't oh, keep them on the bottom of the bench. It, I mean, you're losing wide receivers this week. There's no way you can play Caleb. I'm, Williams. I'm not holding on to him and and clogging a roster spot. There will 100 percent be great games ahead. There there will be weeks that we say pick up and stream Caleb Williams. But I'm not just clog. He is not an every week starter like what you would have hoped. And so he doesn't need to be on your bench. I mean, I'm dropping Joe Burrow. I can drop Caleb Williams. Atlanta is 0-1, taking on the 1-0 Philadelphia Eagles. The DK Sportsbook line, the game's in Philadelphia. Philly is 6.5-point favorites. The over-under is 47. It was an unimpressive debut for Kirk Cousins, the statue. I watched him in practice. He still looks like he can't move. I mean, they're, they're I saw someone tweet out a picture of him rolling out, doing a big rollout, and saying, he looks fine to me. What are, what are you talking about? You can't move. And I watched that rollout, and I went, he don't look great. Like he looks, it's like that's you know, a, a ginger rollout. It's not like you can't be a competent quarterback with limited mobility as he gets back on track. We have had those. Uh, Kurt Warner and uh, Joe Flacco last year couldn't move ever, but it was you know he could dice up a defense. He, late Philip Rivers and Matt Ryan, but but Did like you say late Philip Rivers. Yeah, in the later, but no, I got you. Like those it sounded like they were. Oh, dead. like those, he had passed. Like they were dead. But, those yeah. guys though can still execute play action. They didn't run a play action snap, and I I would be shocked to hear that was an offensive philosophy, or as opposed to that's because Kirk just can't do it. So in week one, if you want optimistic spin, 
the utilization of their star players was fixed from the Arthur Smith era. Yes. Bijan was out there, touched the ball 46% of Atlanta's plays. It was the highest percentage of any team. They had to face a tough defense. Kyle Pitts was out there 95% of the time. That was new. You were very disappointed if you had put Drake Lennon into your lineup last week, but you can also look to a new offense, new coordinator, recovering quarterback, and hope that this matchup against Philly, I think it's who, gonna take time. Well, does it does it take too much time to have it to put Drake Lennon back out there this week? Because mm. Philly's defense is not, you know, they should give up some points. They, yeah, they yeah. should. But like last week, the, honestly, the the Eagles Packers game, I have mentally thrown almost all of that into the garbage of that field was so unbelievably atrocious. Defenders can't react in the appropriate am uh, amount of time. Put those defenders on turf? Like, Jaden Reed, sure, he probably still has a great game. He doesn't do what he did uh, in, in that week if if the defenders are on turf. So, I, for the Atlanta Falcons side, I mean, Pitts is – you're, you're going to play Pitts just because of what how the tight end position rolls. Bijan, I'm going to play with full confidence. Drake London is – it's a it's a really sketchy play to me. I, I'm going to start Drake London this week. I, okay. I, I you're not going to have every week be great. You're not going to have every week be against T.J. Watt. Um, the you know even last season I know they they gave up a lot of points to the Green Bay Packers this, in week one, but last season they gave up a ton of points to the you know to the secondary. So um, I I will start Drake London. I will start uh, Kyle Pitts this week. Wait, 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 Drake London or let's say Drake London or Chris Olave. Olave, Olave. Is against Dallas, Drake London or Chris Godwin against Detroit. Your start I, of the week. I've got them. <clears throat> I've got them back to back in my rankings. I think it's a matter of if you need upside or if you need safety. Safety is Chris Godwin, but Drake London still has more upside than that. Okay. I but, hope that's true. Saquon hurts. AJ Brown and Devontae Smith all out there. Devontae Smith's line is at fifty nine and a half right now. He was in the, the all the off season questions of who's the who's the power slot player mm -hmm. for this offense as of right now. Yeah, Jason's firing off I'm, finger guns because yeah. as of right now, it is Devontae Smith. All right, Dallas Goddard a spot start over Goddard or Colby Jack. I would prefer Colby Jack. Colby Jack Parkinson. Yeah, that's that's a coin flip. I'm gonna throw Friar Muth in ahead of him. <laughs> Well, back by popular demand, we do have a little fun in store for the rest of the year. Fantasy Face Off, presented by DraftKings. I'm so excited. Man. We I'm thought it was gone this year, and um, the people the they, people have demanded. And we listen to the people. The Foot Clan is mighty. It's They're strong, and they... They're the they they wanted their fantasy. They're the face reason off. this face off is here. So um here we go. Quarterback position in week one. Head to head to head. Loser has to spin the wheel of shame. In week one here, um, I guess it's week two, but our first week of yeah. fantasy face off. I'm going with Kyler Murray at sixty six hundred at okay. home for Arizona. I I had Jaden Daniels in there and I I pivoted. I'm gonna go Kyler Murray. I have Jaden Daniels in I there. I have Jaden Daniels. A few hundred dollars uh, less, 6200 My running back starters, Brees Hall at 7400 Alvin Kamara at 7000 Brees Hall Ooh. and Alvin Kamara, those are nice. Okay. Uh, uh, go ahead, Jay. Uh, mine are not quite as nice, but still mighty fine. I've got Jameer Gibbs out there at 6600 and J.K. Dobbins at 5400 oh. Okay, you're wrong. I've got Jameer Gibbs. Yeah, sixty six hundred, and then my RB two. We're it's a full sell. We're going Jordan Mason, okay, against the Minnesota Vikings at fifty two hundred. All right, uh, I'll throw my flex out there. Then I have Jordan Mason at fifty two hundred. I'll my, throw my, my flex, flex out there. I've got Jordan Mason at fifty two hundred in my flex. Stop copying me. <laughs> well, I did. Who's I your flex, Andy. Mike? Um, is Chris Christopher? Is it Christopher or Christian? Christopher Godwin. I believe that's Christopher. The Rod. Uh, what, you could just go if you go Chris, you're probably fine. I know, but Chris I wanted Godwin, to, huh? I wanted to be a little bit formal. He's six K. Jason started the week at Detroit. All right, Rod my, Christopher Godwin. There we go. My wide receivers: Cooper Cup at seventy six hundred. 
Cooper Cup at yeah, 7,600. Let's, let's just watch that one out, guys. You got him? Yeah, there was, okay. I wasn't taking no chances. My wide, other wide receivers at 4,800 and 4,600, Brian Thomas Jr. Nice. At 4,800, and Greg Dortch. Uh, correl- oh, man, the Dortch. The correlating Dortch. with Kyler Murray at 4,600. Okay. 4, I like that. For a full PPR, which DraftKings is, that's, that's not bad. So uh, after Cooper Cup, I've got the other Cooper. I'm hanging with him. Oh. Uh, Amari Cooper. Oh. Give me that drop. Either. There it is. And Malik Neighbors, who uh, at 5,900, I still think has a great game. I'm, you know, It's nice to hear that the knee is not an issue. Malik Neighbors at 5,900. And my other wide receiver is Rasheed Rice against the Cincinnati Bengals at 6,700. I was, I was really close. I was between Cooper and Jaden Daniels or Rasheed Rice and Justin Fields. So I, I went this way. To finish it out with tight end and defense, I am going Taysom Hill at 3,900 at the tight end position. And the Broncos defense on the other side of the Pittsburgh matchup at 2,800. Looking for the classic Justin Fields mistakes in that one. I like that, and they're home. Um, I've got Pat Fryermuth, my start of the week that I believe in uh, at 4,100. And the Patriots at home against the Seattle Seahawks for 2,800. I got Colby Jack Cheese. At the tight end position, so I'm going with the two Rams and my defensive money that was left. Oh, brother, it's bad at the bottom, boys. <laughs> the, the, so I, the Titans against the Jets, that was about the best I could oh, do. That's not too 2, bad. 2,700. Yeah. The, I mean, the, that could work out. The low-tier ones are so <laughs> brutal. So next week we'll get our first spin of the wheel of shame based on this week's results. Uh, fantasy face-off. Back in business. All right. That was the fantasy forecast presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. DraftKings is dishing out NFL no sweat touchdown bets for all customers every game day. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use the code BALLERS. That's the code BALLERS for new customers to get three no sweat tokens this week. All right, that's going to do it for the show. The fantasy footballers, leave us a review over there on Apple Podcasts if you have an extra minute today. Suds and duds on Monday. Enjoy the weekend. Enjoy more football, and we will be back with you soon. Good luck, Foot Clan. Goodbye. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 Gambler. In New York, call 877 8 Hope and Y or text Hope and Y 467 369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888 789 7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas, 21 and over, age and eligibility varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Opt in each week to get one no sweat for each game day. No sweat bonus bet issued based on amount of losing qualifying bet. Max reward varies. Bonus bets expire 100%. 168 hours after issuance. For additional terms or responsible gaming resources, see dkng.co/ftball.